Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Savvy Cast. This is Jamie, and I'm very grateful to all of you for joining, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast. Okay, we're going to have a fun, very informative episode today. I have as my guest someone very dear to me, Finley Copeland. Finley is my going into her fourth year social media coordinator, and way more than that. She works with brands and she analyzes content, edits content. She just basically is a Jill of all trades where family savvy is concerned. And I just love her dearly. And she's adorable. Finley, thank you for being on the Savvy Cast. Thank you, Jamie. It's great to be here. Okay, Finley, I totally forgot to say that you, <laughs> woo, one of the most important things you do, everyone, <laughs> she edits and produces all of the podcasts. She's one of the main podcast producers. We have another one, a part of the team that also does that, but she just does so much and I appreciate her so much. And Finley graduated from Sanford University, where my daughter's graduated. In addition to working for Family Savvy and in the interim between, she's now in the real job search. We'll see where that goes. She's got some <laughs> exciting opportunities ahead. But Thank you. Um, between gra after graduation, Finley joined the Disney College program. And so Finley is going to share insider tips, everything you might want to know if you've been and you want to have a better experience or if you've never been and you want to optimize your experience because Finley knows so much. So Finley, before we dive into all of that, you know what's coming, the icebreaker <laughs> question. What would you choose as your last meal? All right. So I've been waiting for this question. <laughs> my last meal would definitely be my mom makes the best baked spaghetti. Ooh, it is uh, my all-time favorite. I can eat that all day long. So I would have ooh. baked spaghetti. And then on the side, I would have your smashed potatoes. Ooh. I had those this week and they are so good. Oh, they are. Oh, and God. then for dessert, I would probably have some sort of ice cream, specifically from Big Spoon. Big Spoon Creamery ice cream. That's my favorite. Oh my goodness. You're so specific and detailed. And that's why I need <laughs> you in my, my life. And also everyone, Finley is an accomplished dancer and she is a dance instructor for Miss Kelly's dance studio. Mm -hmm. Y'all, she does it all. She, you also orchestrated a whole team, led a team for step sing. So you are mm -hmm. multi-talented in so many ways. So Finley, okay, we're just going to go ahead before we dig in and I'm going to just address the elephant in the room. There is some controversy and some people have concerns about Disney. And I just want to let everyone know that you are someone who went, you are shining light. Your experience was great. You blessed every child that you encountered. You did not have any particular issues. Although we know there are things out there that maybe you don't know about that I don't know about. So I know many of you are never going to take your children to Disney. Many of you might. So this is for those who want to know how to maximize your experience. So we're not going to dig into any of the other. We're just going to focus on the positive. So Finley, the first thing I think that when I hear parents talking about Disney, one of the first things I hear them say is when is the best time? Because crowds can be yes. such an issue. Is, yes. there, is there an answer to that that you think is accurate? Because you'll hear different answers based on where you search. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the best time to go, in my opinion, is definitely September. Out of the time that I was there, it's perfect because all the kids just went back to school. And so lots of families aren't going in September since they just started. So I would say literally the specifically the emptiest I ever saw the parks was the week before Labor Day. Really? Because okay. no one is traveling the week before Labor Day. 
they're always traveling for Labor Day. So oh. I would say definitely if anyone's able to go there, there are some rides that always have a three hour wait that mm-hmm. I saw had a 15 minute wait during that entire time. It is a drastic difference. So I recommend then. Okay. I also recommend mid to late January because everyone just traveled during their Christmas vacations and uh, lots of people are also going back to school. So mid to late January, it's once again, empty. Oh, wow. So what's the weather difference between September and January? I would say it's usually still pretty hot in Florida in September. So just be aware of that. There's going to be probably rain because it's usually hurricane season around then so be ready for that it's gonna be hot and it could be rainy uh january it's nice because i would say usually disney's in the 50s and 60s so if you want to kind of get away from the humidity and heat then that's definitely the time you're going to want to go okay okay well i i we took the kids with zane's parents eons ago emma was in a stroller i think the girls were six or seven so i am way out of the the loop but (laughs) you mentioned lines two and three hour lines now i under no circumstance would stand in a line that long for any much of anything other than heaven (laughs) because (laughs) you know honestly i just don't have the patience for that (laughs) is there a way that somebody who says you know i don't care what i have to pay i don't care you know, what we have to do, is there a way around that kind of weight for certain rides or is it just what, what it is? So I definitely would recommend the Disney Genie Plus service. So what that is, is it usually ranges, depending on the day, it can range from $15 a person to $29 a person. And you can pay for that the day of And you can go into the parks and basically you can reserve a time where you can go and get in line. And the lines are shorter. They move a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And I think me personally, whenever I'm going on a trip with my parents, there's never a time where I'm not doing that. It is so worth the money. Lots of people were a bit disappointed just because of the fact that Fast Pass used to be included in people's stay and they mm-hmm. retired Fast Pass after the pandemic. Okay. Disney Genie Plus is pretty much the same. So they can just basically, you'll look on the app, see a time for a ride. You can select it. And once that time hits, you can go get in that line. It is the best thing ever. Okay, I cannot speak highly enough. Okay. It just depends. It depends on the ride. Some rides may have longer wait times than others. So it varies quite a bit, but usually you don't have to wait any longer than 20 to 30 minutes for those. They are really fast. Sometimes you can just walk on with those at any given time. And so it's good. You can book one ride at a time, or if the return time is longer than two hours since you booked it, then you can book a second one. So we can go more in depth on that, that you could do a whole podcast just on that. There's so much strategy involved, but Disney Genie Plus service is the way to go. Now, if somebody is wanting to really like invest a lot of money into their experience, then they can do a VIP tour guide. They Mm. pretty much get to go into the express lane for all we call them lightning lanes at Disney so they get to go through the lightning lane the fast lane for all the rides they'll have a VIP tour guide that will take them everywhere all day long they'll escort you it includes some snacks so your tour guide can go grab you a snack if you're in line for a ride they'll escort you pretty much right on through so you get to go on whatever ride pretty much you want and you get to go fast Now it is a big, it is a big price tag. So it's got to be for the right person, but the Mm -hmm. VIP tour guides are excellent, excellent service. And if you're wanting just to get through all the lines and wanting to experience the most out of your Disney trip and you don't mind the price, I think it's wonderful. Do you um, feel comfortable telling us what the price is? Because I know that's a burning question. 
I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is several hundred, a hundred dollars for a day. It is a lot. Uh, not I don't think it's per person. You can like some people, what will they will do is they will like split it. Like a large family will go Mm -hmm. and they'll split the price. And so that's sometimes the best way of going about it. Mm -hmm. But I can't confidently remember how much it is. I just know for like a day, it's hundreds and hundreds of dollars that you're going to be spending, but Mm -hmm. it is a luxury service. Yeah. So if that's what you want, it's a really, it's a really good service. They yeah. have the utmost hospitality. Do Disney college students do um, the VIP host and hostessing? They no. don't. So okay. it is probably like one of the most highly viewed jobs at Disney, or at least in the operation side of Disney, because the best of the best have to get in. People will work for a long time to get up oh. to that because a lot of celebrities will do VIP tours. Lots of Disney higher ups will do them. Just you got to work oh, your way yeah. up. So they don't just put any Disney college programmers in there. Oh. <laughs> well, Finley, I should have asked you this at the outset. Can you just tell us in a nutshell what the Disney college program is about and what you do when you're yeah, part of that? Absolutely. So as Jamie mentioned, as soon as I graduated from Sanford University last year, I went and decided to do the Disney College program. And basically what that is, is you can uh, apply for it. Usually the applications open in January for the fall semester. And usually for the spring semester, they'll open up in around August. Mm -hmm. And you can apply to be a part of it. And what you'll do is if you're accepted, you will move to Disney. You get to decide what your start date is and when your end date for your program is. So it's basically just an internship. And then what they'll do is they will assign you to a job and a location at Walt Disney World. It could be doing anything anywhere at Disney. Most popular jobs are food and bev, merchandise. You can do concierge. You can do a uh, park reading, attractions, custodial, you name it. Mm. Disney College program is absolutely massive. So usually people's programs are about four to six months long. They'll go there. They'll live in Disney housing, which mm-hmm. is about 10 minutes from all the parks. Mm -hmm. And they recently just created new housing that is super, super nice. I like to call it my mini resort. (laughs) Oh, wow. Yes. It's so nice. The apartments are brand new. They have like at each of the housing, they have like two giant pools that have jumbotrons and they'll host like different events for all the Disney college programmers. So it's a really nice way to kind of get like a college environment while also being at Disney, it's super fun. Then you also get work experience working at Disney. You get all the Disney training, which looks great on a resume. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves to hear about that. Mm -hmm. So I honestly cannot speak highly enough about the program. I absolutely love it. Now I do tell people to keep in mind is that if you're interested in the Disney college program, you're not just on a vacation. Some, some people will go into it thinking, oh, I'm just on a big, long vacation at Disney. Um, you are there to work a full-time job. So yeah, yeah, they do have to go into it thinking, okay, I will be working, but it's nice because you do get the Disney, some of Disney benefits of you get to go into the parks for free Mm -hmm. and you get the free parking, you get reduced stays at resorts. So you get a lot of these discounts and stuff. So I think it's a great thing for college students to get involved in. I personally, you can do it while you're in college. I personally waited until after I graduated. So I wouldn't delay my graduation Mm -hmm. and you can do the Disney college program up to two years after your graduation. Oh, okay. Now is it paid or just internship? It's paid. It's a paid internship. And your housing. Okay. Yeah. Basically, one thing that they do for the Disney College program is they will take your rent out of your paycheck before you ever receive the paycheck. So So you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you don't ever have to worry about it. 
they do it for you. It's very easy. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Well, Finley, for those, I was at an event recently and there were a lot of moms. I was at a table with a lot of moms with young children who are planning a trip. One of the biggest things is where to stay because you've got proximity, you've got, you know, the, the, the particular aesthetic and the vibe of, of all the different places. What is your personal favorite and why? And then maybe hit some of the places people might want to consider. Maybe your favorite in each, you know, the ultimate and then maybe a little budget. Yes. My personal favorite that I've ever stayed at is probably going to be Art of Animation. That one, it is very heavily Disney themed. Um, So if you want lots, if you just want to walk around a resort and be like, wow, I'm at Disney, this is it. It's basically, it has all of this different pieces of artwork that are all based on Disney movies. They have four sections of the resort that are themed The Little Mermaid. Then there's a Lion King section. There's a Finding Nemo section and a Cars section. And it, when you walk through, it literally looks like you are in the movie. I think that one is really good for families because a lot of them have um, like family suites. So that's a really good option. And they have a massive Finding Nemo pool that is really, really cool. And it's really new. Is this a new This one, it's newer, but it's not brand new. It opened, I would probably say like eight years ago. I'm not entirely sure. So is it a luxury? Is it, or or is it just the, still the three that luxury? It is a a value resort. So that's going to be on your lower tier. Oh. So a lot of people I think are surprised when I say that it's my favorite, but like I said, it's one of those where like you walk around and you're like, I'm at Disney. You yeah. can, if you go to the car section of the resort, it literally looks like you stepped into the movie and you can take photos next to, they have the life-size version of the cars. So like wow. Lightning McQueen and all of that stuff. So and it's, it's an really immersive. Nice. A, immersive. It's so immersive. Okay. Okay. That's- I love that resort. And it's nice because you're right next to the Skyliner. And you can uh, jump on the Skyliner and go to Hollywood Studios and Epcot from that resort very easily. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, that that is great information because I would never have thought that. Now, what about the three, you know, for someone for whom money is no object, they want to say in the best of the best, we have, what is it? Grand Floridian, Contemporary mm-hmm. and Polynesian? Yes. Those are a few of the deluxe. Out of those, I would probably say I personally really like the Polynesian. I think it's Mm -hmm. very unique, obviously, with its heavy theming. It has great restaurants there like Ohana's. And it's really nice because you can sit out on their beach and watch the Magic Kingdom fireworks. Mm. So that's really, really fun. I like that one. Another one that's technically a Disney Vacation Club resort, but it's also, it's similar to deluxe pricing, is the Boardwalk Resort. That one is so nice. It is right next to Epcot. You can literally walk from the resort into Epcot. You have your own personal entryway from that resort into the park. And it literally looks like an old time California boardwalk. It's so nice because I think a lot of kids would like it, but also I think adults will like it. They have like an ice cream shop that's along the boardwalk. They have a really nice Italian restaurant. They have a piano bar and they also Um. have a dance club that is, looks like old timey themed. So it has something for everyone and it's just stunning at night. Like I said, it looks like an old tiny California boardwalk. Oh, wow. Okay. Now yes. is that, um, and I know we had dinner. We didn't stay there at the beach club. Is that a, yes. is that a luxury or is that more a little lower, a little beneath? Because it was so neat, the little beach. Oh yeah. Beach and yacht, that resort is definitely it's more on it has like deluxe pricing it's technically labeled as a disney vacation club resort but it's going to be the same price range as anything like the grand floridian polynesian 
it has deluxe pricing. That one's also really nice. And it's right across from the boardwalk too. So literally if you're staying at Disney Yacht and Beach, you can go and walk over and look around at boardwalk. Those oh. two, absolutely amazing and beautiful. Yacht and Beach also has the best pool out of all the resorts, in my opinion. <laughs> yes. I remember thinking when we were there thinking and looking at the pool, like, oh, I wish we had stayed here. It's so lovely because correct me if I'm wrong, but you can dine at any of the resorts, whether you're staying there or not. You just cannot partake of the amenities. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. You can okay. you can dine at any resort. OK, is it? um to the point where you have to reserve in most of the higher end or is everything pretty much just walk in and wait? It really depends. I would always recommend people, if you can get a reservation, get a reservation. Walk up list for some restaurants can be, they, they can be iffy, but if you can get a reservation, I highly encourage it. Usually if someone is like dying to go to a certain restaurant and they keep like, they just don't see any reservations. My biggest tip is look, start looking about three days before you want to go, because mm. there's going to be last minute cancellations where people are on their vacation and they've decided they're going to change their plans, cancel their yeah. dining reservation. And so I tell people at that point, two to three days before look at it every hour just to see, oh, hey, yeah. did anything open up? Because almost always there is something that opens up that will work for any, any dining at Disney, even if it's the hardest thing to get into. And that's how I got into a lot of them. <laughs> really? Okay. Cause I yeah. saw on your Instagram, some of the places and it was like, wow, cause some of them were not there when I was there. So tell us about dining. Tell us about Talk to even the people who think they know everything, some things that maybe you learned that are well-kept secrets as far as dining at Disney. Oh, goodness. So uh, Disney got rid of this after the pandemic, but it's coming back in 2024, the Disney dining plan. That, my mom's a travel agent, and one thing that she would always recommend to all her clients is do the Disney dining plan. I have to look back at their, they just announced the pricing for the Disney dining plan today. So I don't know if the pricing is similar to what they had, but if it is, then I tell people do that. That's sometimes the best bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. You can get such amazing food for a much more affordable price at Disney. That's a good kept secret that not a lot of people okay. always think about and do, but that dining plan will include snacks and you can, you get a certain amount of snack credits. So you oh. can go if you're in the park and you just want to go to a quick service and get an ice cream cone, you can use a snack credit to get that. And you get a certain amount during your time. It also includes some of your meals at some of the sit down restaurants as well. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good secret. Some of my favorite dining that I would recommend to anybody. My one and all time favorite is a character dining, which is phenomenal is storybook dining at artist point this one is fairly new it came out within the last five years mm -hmm. and it is exquisite it is at the wilderness lodge resort and it is phenomenal you walk in and it's all snow white and the seven dwarves themed it looks like you just walked in to a fairy tale forest. There are trees that are lit up with fairy lights. You get to meet Snow White, Grumpy, Dopey, and the Evil Queen. And all of the food, all your desserts, it's themed after the movie. And it's nice because they bring like, you get three appetizers and they're mm -hmm. little tiny sample sizes. So you get to try one of oh. everything. Same thing with the dessert. And it combines amazing food with an amazing experience. So it's my favorite. It's okay. a more higher end one and it is more difficult to get into, but okay. keep checking for reservations and it'll come up. Mom's driving or working in the middle of something. You don't have to stop. All of this will be in the show notes. Yes. You will put all of these things that we're talking about. Finley will put them in the show notes. So you'll be able to easily refer back. Okay. That is a great one. We, we dined one night at the wilderness and it was wonderful, but that was not there. Oh, yes. So that's great. So, okay. So what's your second? 
favorite? My second favorite is at the Yacht and Beach Resort, and it is Beaches and Cream. I oh. tell people all the time it is themed after a 1950s ice cream kind of it yeah. looks like a 1950s diner, but it's known for their ice cream. Mm-hmm. And I would say this is a more reasonably priced Disney restaurant. Like it is, I would say on the lower end for a sit down restaurant. Oh, okay. It is amazing. The food is so good. There's burgers and sandwiches and soups. I love the grilled cheese there, which sounds like, why would you pay so much money for a grilled cheese? Mm-hmm. It changes you. It's so good. And then what they're best known for is their ice cream sundae that they put in a giant kitchen sink. It has a scoop of every flavor they have, every topping that they have. It includes a whole can of whipped cream. Oh my god. And they top it with chocolate syrup and caramel. So and what's the kitchen sink? You do you get to keep the kitchen sink that they serve it in or we don't get to keep it, but it, uh-huh. it is one of those where like, you probably need at least three or four people to finish it. So if a family's going, yeah. I tell families, Hey, you got to get the kitchen sink because two people cannot, two people cannot finish it. Oh my but goodness. It is amazing. So that's a great experience then. Okay. I love that. Okay. Any other dining? I have so many. I got to think. I know there's another one. While you're thinking, I do want to ask this. Yes. Are you able to carry your own snacks? Yes. Oh, okay. You can bring any, any drinks, any snacks. You can all bring it into Disney. That's wonderful. Okay. I love that. So for those who are very, you know, fastidious about wanting to eat certain things, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. You can bring whatever you want into the park. Some people try and bring drinks that are in glass bottles. We can't let glass bottles in, but anything else works just fine. So you can bring it. Disney doesn't, doesn't hold you back from that. (laughs) Okay. Okay. That's wonderful. Well, Finley, what, have you thought of another one you wanted to share about dining? Because I did want to move to transportation, shuttling around. Yeah, there's another one of Disney dining that I think is absolutely exquisite is the La Cellier Steakhouse at Mm. Epcot. Mm. Jamie, you would like this one. It is really good. I went there two times during my Disney college program. And they have some of the best steaks. I highly recommend that. And also if people love a good steakhouse, Steakhouse 71. Are all of these on Disney property? Of course, that one is by Epcot. Okay, so all that you're sharing is on Disney property. Steakhouse 71 is a really nice environment. It doesn't seem like you're at Disney, but it's very fancy and elegant. It's at the Contemporary Resort. Mm. And what I always recommend to people is if they get a steak, they have a steak sauce flight that you can pay a little extra and it'll include little sizes of all of their steak sauces. So oh, you I can dip that. and try them all. Oh, I, think I love it's the that. the best thing. And then they also have the best creme brulee. Oh, yeah. Those are a few of my, my personal favorites at Disney. Okay. Well, I know character meals. We went to a character breakfast. I believe it was at the Grand Floridian. Um, mm-hmm. It was Snow White. I can't, I'm, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Are, there, are those like, if you're like, are those still a big deal? And also is the um, meeting Cinder, the Cinderella castle. <laughs> I remember. Yes. Okay. Character dining. Absolutely amazing. They've now are just starting to bring more and more of that back. Mm-hmm. I've done Cinderella's Royal Table in the castle many times, and I think it is awesome. Sometimes the food to some people can be hit or miss. I enjoyed the food. I think it is amazing, especially for kids, because mm-hmm. you get to meet Cinderella as soon as you get there. Mm-hmm. And then they take you up into the dining room, and each kid, if that's a little girl, they'll give her a magic wand. If it's a little boy, they'll give him a sword. And 
they get to meet uh i think there's four princesses and you don't know which ones will be there they rotate them out all the time but you get to do that and dine in cinderella's castle it's it's an amazing experience is it still so hard to get you just have to call and call and call yeah it yeah, is so is. hard. I would say keep on looking at the app all the time, but I think they start opening up, I could be wrong on this, but they start opening up dining reservations 60 days ahead of your vacation. So mm -hmm. I, that's one of those that like the moment that those reservations open up, it goes yeah. in a second. Yeah. So people, I would say they have to be ready because I never saw any last minute reservations pop up for that one. It's the highest one. It's the highest demand. The, the Cinderella's castle. Yeah. Okay. Another cool thing about dining that just occurred to me that I highly recommend, and it's called an enchanting extra. And what those are is you pay a little bit extra for a certain experience. And I did this and it was awesome was it's called savor the savannah and it's at animal kingdom and i think it's about 200 250 dollars per person mm -hmm. what they'll do is they'll give you a private tour of their savannah so you get to see like get up close to like giraffes and all that you see oh, wow. on their like wildlife reserve and yeah. then there is a deck that they have in the middle of the savannah and they'll pull you up to it. You get off and you have African and Indian cuisine. You can look out, see the elephants, flamingos, like you're just in the middle of all of it oh and you goodness. eat. It includes um, wine, juices, different things like that. And it was probably the best experience I've had. Lots of people wow. don't think about it because only about, they only take 15 people per tour. Mm. So it's very exclusive, but I found a few last minute reservations for it. And I think it is one of the best experiences that Disney has. Oh, that is wonderful. African and Indian food. Yes. It was That's so good. So good. And then they had amazing desserts too. Phenomenal. And that's a learning experience as well. I mean, that's amazing. Yes. So tell us about um, mom. Okay. Getting to and fro mm -hmm. strollers, golf cart. I mean, what, what options do you have? If you, do you have options for, if you just want at the end of the day, when everyone's tired, but you still want to maximize your time, you always have to walk or are there other shuttle options? So for Disney World, it always depends on where you're staying. Mm. I would say, obviously, if you have your own car, that is something that I did during my entire time. I had my car, mm -hmm. so I would just park. Parking is about, for just general parking, that's about $25 a day. So mm -hmm. just be aware of that if you decide. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think Disney World does some amazing public transportation. The buses any resort will always have buses going to anywhere. So mm -hmm. you can always take that. Certain resorts have the Skyliner and that will run to two parks, Epcot and Hollywood Studios. I love the Skyliner personally. I think it's awesome. It's super fun. It feels like a ride in and of itself. Just like a, um, like a, what do you call it's it? It's like but gondolas. Hang, a go yeah. Oh, gondola. Okay. Yeah. Are they pretty high? Are they a little scary or? I personally, I'm afraid of heights and I don't find them that scary. Maybe uh -huh. like some people would, but yeah. I think they're, they're really nice. It feels so fun. And that's a great way to get to Epcot and Hollywood studios. Okay. If you are staying at Grand Floridian, Polynesian, or the Contemporary Resort, then the monorail is a great option. It's probably going to be your fastest option. For those who don't know, the monorail is basically like a really fancy train. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like yeah. a, it's like a fancy subway train, Yeah, but I would say that's probably the best for those, but it's only for those three resorts. They also have uh, taxis that are called minivans and you can get one of those. I've never done that, but I've seen a lot of other people do it, but I usually highly recommend the buses. I think the buses are good. It'll take you anywhere you need to be. And if you can take the Skyliner, 
take the Skyliner. It's it's really awesome. Right. Okay. Well, Finley, what advice? Because I know you've seen you've seen the meltdowns with the little <laughs> ones, and you know we all we have you know if you are a parent, you've had it. Whether it's the grocery store or there, what is your best advice based on what you've seen for letting small children be immersed in all that without becoming overwhelmed in the middle of the day and just falling apart? I just tell parents, don't, don't bring your kids to Disney until they're like at least six years old. <laughs> okay. So you, you pretty much see, I, I would say that that would be accurate, but I have so many friends who go earlier, but just be prepared for, you know, yeah. I would say if you're going to take any kid that's younger than six, then definitely choose a resort that is close to yeah. the parks so that you can get to and from somewhere quickly for a nap and then jump right back into it. But I tell people typically you're spending so much money on a yeah. park ticket each day that you don't want to go back and forth to take yeah. naps or anything. Some yeah. kids, some people will let their kids just nap in their stroller and that yeah. works. If, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. Yeah. But I find that kids at six years old are tall enough to ride everything. Yeah. They mm -hmm. are old enough to remember it and they're old enough to where they don't need a nap in the middle of the day and they can yeah. just go at it. Go, go. Anybody younger than that, I tell people, I'm like, you know, I think you'll really just enjoy and get the most out of your trip if you just wait a few years. So yeah. that's my biggest tip. I don't really have much to help yeah. out if they're younger than yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I do um, want to ask, how do they handle lost child? Do they shut down the park? I mean, is there a, I know they've got to have a system for finding lost children, which is every parent's nightmare. Yes. So honestly, we got a really good system in place. Um, when I was at Animal Kingdom, when I worked there, I had a lost child situation happen. Mm -hmm. We don't ever call it lost child. We are trained to call it lost parent. They've lost oh. their parents. Okay. Um, okay. That way lost it, they, That's right. they don't panic as much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and basically what we do is if we see a child that has lost their parent, mm -hmm. then what we do is we'll stay with them. And we get a description, then we will call security and a security guard will come over and assist trying to locate the family. So that way we can get a child back to where they need to be safe and sound as much as possible. Honestly, when I, when I had that situation happen, we got it resolved pretty quickly. They are really on top of it. So we basically just get security involved and they'll make sure they will not leave until it is resolved. So if a parent sees that their child is, they look down and they're not there, they immediately need to call security. Yeah. Or find the nearest cast member. If you see anybody okay. that's working, go to them. They can contact security because you may not see security out and about in that mm -hmm. moment. Find okay. the nearest cast member, they'll contact security and they can get somebody there to help you. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Anything else, Finley, anything else that you want to share that maybe people don't know before we sign off? And I guess you do encourage them to go to all of the parks at, l at least for half a day. Even if you don't think your children will enjoy Epcot, at least expose them if you I mean what oh yeah you? well I think even I think everyone needs to spend a day at each park for Disney World I mm -hmm. think it is just that I the parks are where it's at and even stuff that may be geared more towards adults like Epcot there's ways to get your kids involved like mm -hmm. I think they still do this of where you can go in one of the gift shops at Epcot and you can get a little passport Mm -hmm. And you can go, they have like a little fun kid, they call it kid cot, a little kid section in each country around the world showcase. Oh. And you can take your kid and they'll go up and you hand it to the cast member and they'll sign and stamp your passport saying that you went to this country. And I think it's a really cool way to get your kids involved because also one really cool thing that Disney does is not only does Disney have the Disney college program, 
but they also have Disney International Program. And what that is, is that they will have people from all across the world come and work at Disney World and specifically in Epcot because every cast mm-hmm. member that you see that is in the country in the world showcase that you're in is actually from that country. So when oh, you go to Mexico, yeah. you will find all, the only cast members that work there are from Mexico oh, In Japan. Yeah. All of them are from Japan. So it's really cool because you get to have, you get the passport stamped and usually what the cast member will do is they will write a little message to the kid mm-hmm. and they will write it in their native language and then translate it in English. Oh, and that's wow. a really cool keepsake. It's like, I think like $10. Yeah. It's a really cool keepsake and a really great way to get your kids engaged at Epcot. And most people don't even know that exists. Wow. I love that. That's an, an educational experience. A hundred percent. Yes. I think Epcot can be one of, it was one of my favorites growing up because of that activity of where I got to go around and see all the different countries. It was one of my personal favorite things. So I tell people if they're at Epcot and they're worried about their kid getting bored, I think that's a really good activity for them to do. I always tell people also for little kids is Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. If you're willing to splurge, it is a splurge. Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique is a little boutique where you're basically you can pay they'll have dresses and gowns for your little princess mm-hmm. and they you pay for a makeover they get their hair their makeup oh, done wow. and they basically get to sometimes take photos you can also pay I think to get their nails done or whatever but it's such an amazing experience because it makes girls feel like they are literally Cinderella They have their Um, own fairy godmother apprentice and uh, it's so, it is so cute. I remember I did it when I was seven and I still remember it to this day. I think it's one of the best experiences. So I always recommend that too, to people with young children. Oh, that's wonderful. Anything similar that you would recommend for boy moms uh, that's similar, just something that's just amazing for young boys? Young boys. They used, Disney used to have a salon that was geared towards boys where you could dress them up as a pirate. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, they no longer do that, which is really, really sad. Mm -hmm. But, oh, this is a cool activity that I guess if little boys really like pirates, you can have little girls that like pirates too. But in Magic Kingdom and Adventureland, they call, they have this thing called a pirate's adventure. Mm -hmm. And it's a tiny little kiosk off to the side. And many people don't know about it. But if you go into it, they'll give you a pirate map and it has like little markings and you will go all across the area near Pirates of the Caribbean and it'll send you on missions And there's different props all around that will interact with you. And that's a really cool thing to do with your kids, especially little boys, if they liked finding treasure. And so that's all of what you're trying to do. And there's like six different missions that you can do. So you could easily spend like an hour doing all of these missions if you wanted to. Oh, so there's plenty to occupy and keep people busy. Oh yeah. It keeps them busy, gets them walking a lot. So I think that's a great activity that most people don't, don't ever know it exists. That's wonderful. Well, Finley, you have given us so many great tips, recommendations, and suggestions. I think this is going to be so helpful to any mom who's, or grandmother, who's going to, who's planning a trip. So if there's anything else you want to leave us with, then we'll sign off. Yeah, absolutely. My mom, if anybody is wanting to book a Disney trip, my mom has her own travel agency. It's called All About Travel. It's based in Birmingham, Alabama, but she can book travel for anyone, no matter where they're at. Mm. And uh, I will always help her with giving suggestions for Disney. She's also very knowledgeable. She's tried many different Disney experiences. So if anybody's wanting to book a Disney trip or a trip to anywhere, she does all travel. I will include her contact information in the show notes. Wendy's fabulous. She's wonderful. (laughs) And you're, if you use Wendy, you're really getting a twofer because you can 
also help with all those insider tips, but oh yeah. Thank oh, yeah. you. This has been a delight and you're just so precious to come on and share all of this. And if anyone wants to reach out to Finley, we'll include her contact information. She's happy to answer any questions maybe that we did not address about Disney and your experience there. So Finley, yeah. thank you, dear. Thank you, Jamie. You have a fabulous rest of your day. And to everyone watching or listening, thank you so much. And until next time, you have a very blessed day. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Savvy Cast. If you'll take the time to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, that would mean so much. As always, thank you for listening and have a blessed day.